Lesson six, I will solve problems involving mixed units of capacity. All right, so in your math journal today, we're only gonna be doing one thing, and I want you to go ahead and write today's date, lesson six, capacity. So in order for us to be able to add mixed units of capacity, we have to remember the conversion factors for capacity. So in your math journal today, I just as a review, we're going to write, we're gonna, we're gonna draw actually, this shape that we drew already once before, I want you to draw this really big G for me. And remember what the G stands for? The G stands for gallon. So how many quarts are in a gallon? Well, remember, quart is the same root word as quarter. And how many quarters are in a dollar? There are four. So if there are four quarters in a dollar, there are four quarts in a gallon. So we're going to put four Q's. And notice I'm making these really big because if you remember, I'm going to write inside these. Okay, so now I'm going to put how many pints there are in a quarter. So remember there are not in a quarter, but a quart. Remember there are two pints. So we're going to go ahead and put two pints inside every quart. And I'm making these P's really big because remember, I'm gonna be putting some cups inside these pints. So that's why I'm making these P's really big so I can write inside of them. <clears throat> okay, so now I've got four quarts in a gallon, two pints in every quart, and how many cups are in every pint? Two, right? So inside each of these, we're going to put C's. Cup, cup. So I want you to go ahead and do that. Inside every pint, we're gonna put a C. You're going to need these conversions today to be able to add mixed units of capacity. So I thought it was worth the time to just review really quickly how many quarts are in a gallon and how many pints are in a quart and how many cups are in a pint, etc. We're going to be referring back to this as we work today. All right, so let's go ahead and get out our problem set. And you're going to notice that the, after you put your name, it says determine the following sums and differences. So we have three quarts plus one quart. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of do a reverse number bond. So three quarts and one quart is equal to four quarts. How many gallons would be equal to four quarts? Well, since there's four quarts and one gallon, this would be one gallon. Okay, so now let's look at B. So we've got this mixed unit number right here, two gallons and one quart plus three quarts, and we're trying to get all of this to gallons. So Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think, okay, how can I make another gallon? I've already got two gallons, right? So I've got two gallons, and then I have this one quart and these three quarts. So how many quarts is that? That would be four quarts, right? And we know that four quarts is equal to one gallon. So we've got two gallons plus another gallon, so this would be equal to three gallons. Okay, so let's look at C. So now I'm trying to take one quart away from a gallon. So this kind of reminds me of a whole number minus a fraction. It's kind of very similar, isn't it? I'm trying to take away something smaller away from this whole object here. So if I decompose this gallon into quarts, how many quarts are in a gallon? Four, right? So what if I call this four quarts and then I subtract one quart from four quarts, that leaves me with three quarts. Okay, so again, I'm trying to take away one quart from five gallons this time. So when I decompose this, I don't need to decompose all of these gallons, I really just need to decompose one. So I'm going to change this into four gallons and four quarts. So here's four gallons, here's my other gallon, so it's still equal to five, but now I'm able to take away one quart. So my gallons are not gonna change, I'm still gonna have my four gallons, and then four quarts minus one quart is equal to three quarts. Okay, so I know that so far what we've been working on has been pretty tough, but I want you to hang with me and, and see if you can't get the hang of it. All right, so let's take a look now at E. So you can see C stands for cup. So we have two cups plus two cups. 
and we're trying to convert this to quartz. So if you look back at our diagram, okay, and we've got cups, two cups is equal to a pint, and we're trying to take two cups plus two cups and change it into quartz. So how many cups are in a quart? One, two, three, four. So we could look at it like this. Two cups plus two cups is equal to four cups, and there are four cups in one quart, so this would be equal to one quart. All right, so now we've got one quart and one pint plus three pints, and we're trying to change this into quarts. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to separate the one quart and the one pint, and then I'm going to add that to these three pints. So now I've got pints and pints. So that leaves me with one quart and four pints. Well, four pints would be equal to how many quarts? Let's go back and look. So I've got one, two, three, four pints. So that is equal to two quarts. So now I've got two quarts plus one quart, and that will be equal to three quarts. All right, so now I'm going to try to take away pints away from quarts. So I'm going to use a number bond here to decompose this. Now, I'm trying to take away three pints, and there's only two pints in a quart. So I'm not going to be able to just decompose one of these. One quart would be equal to how many pints? That would be equal to two pints, and then the other quart would be equal to two pints. So together, I've got four pints minus three pints, and I'd be left with one pint. All right, so now we're trying to take cups away from quarts. So let's go back and look for a minute at how many cups are in a quart. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four cups in a quart. Okay, so let's remember that. All right, so I'm going to decompose this. I'm going to take away one quart, so that leaves four, and the other quart I'm going to change into four cups. So it still equals five quarts. Here's four quarts, and here's another quart. I've just decomposed it into cups. So nothing's going to happen to these, these quarts. I'm going to leave them as is, and then I'm going to take these three cups away from these four cups, and that leaves one cup. So I have four quarts and one cup. All right, so let's take a look at number two. Find the following sums and differences. Show your work. Okay, so again, I'm adding mixed capacity units. I have six gallons, and I have three quarts plus three quarts. So let's just go ahead and add those quarts together. So that gives me six gallons and six quarts. Okay, so let's use a number bond here to go ahead and decompose these quarts into gallons and quarts. So how many quarts make up a gallon? That would be four, right? So if I decompose this six quarts, I would have one gallon. And how many quarts would be left over? Because remember, one gallon is equal to four quarts. So this will be equal to two quarts. So now I can just add my six gallons and my one gallon, which equals seven. And I have two quarts left over. All right, so for B, I have 10 gallons and 3 quarts plus 3 gallons and 3 quarts. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to add my gallons together. So, okay, so 10 gallons plus 3 gallons would be 13 gallons. And then 3 quarts plus 3 quarts would be equal to 6 quarts. So since there's only four quarts in a gallon, I can decompose this six quarts just like I did the six quarts over here, which would be one gallon, which is equal to four quarts, and two quarts. And then I can add my 13 gallons and my one gallon, which gets me 14, and two quarts would be left over. All right, now let's try a little bit of subtraction here. So I've got nine gallons and one pint, and I'm trying to take away two pints. 
So I'm going to decompose one of these gallons. So I'm going to be left with eight gallons. And my other gallon, I'm going to decompose into how many pints are in a gallon. Do you remember? Let's go back and look. How many pints are in one gallon? Two, four, six, eight. Okay, so we have eight pints for the other gallon plus this pint equals nine pints. So I took one gallon away and I decomposed it into eight pints and I added it to this pint. Now I have eight gallons, nine pints. Now I can go ahead and take away the two pints from this nine pints and that leaves seven and I still have eight gallons. All right, why don't you try D by yourself? I know this is pretty tricky, but this is very similar to what we just did here. Okay, so hopefully you tried to do this problem by yourself. My first strategy would have been to decompose D so that I would be able to subtract these seven pints from this one pint. So if I took these seven gallons and one pint and I took away one gallon, that would leave me with six. So remember, there are eight pints in a gallon. So I could take this one gallon and change it into eight pints and add it to this one pint and now I have nine pints. Now I can just subtract six gallons and nine pints minus two gallons and seven pints. So gallons from gallons, six minus two gallons would leave four gallons, nine pints minus seven pints would leave five pints. So hopefully you were able to get part of that by yourself. All right, let's take a look at E. So we have 16 quarts and two cups plus four cups. So what happens if we add all of this together? I get 16 quarts and six cups. So how many cups are in a quart? If you don't remember, you can always look back at our, at our model that we drew. If you looked back, you will notice that there are four cups in a quart. So we can decompose these six cups into one quart and two cups. Now I can add 16 quarts in one quart and that equals 17 quarts and then I'll have two cups left over. All right, let's take a look at F. So again, we're gonna add these together. Six gallons and three gallons equals nine gallons. Five pints and three pints equals eight pints. So how many pints are in a gallon? I want you to go ahead and look back at our model and I want you to decompose this by yourself and then let's come back and see how you did. Well, did you find that there were eight pints in one gallon? If you did, then you could change this eight pints to one gallon, and that would give us 10 gallons and zero pints. All right, let's take a look at an application problem. The capacity of a pitcher is three quarts. Right now it contains one quart, three cups of liquid. How much more liquid can the pitcher hold? So I'm going to try to draw a model here. So I'm thinking to myself, I could use a tape diagram here. So it says that the capacity of a pitcher is three quarts. Do you think that's part or is that whole? Well, if the capacity, the capacity means this is how much it can hold. So that would be my total. This pitcher can hold three quarts altogether. So this is the total. So right now it has one quart and three cups of liquid and we want to know how much more can it hold. So we have one part and we're missing the other part and we have a total. So what would you do to find the missing part? Well we would subtract, right? So we would have three quarts minus one quart and three cups and we want to know what the answer to this is. So in order to be able to subtract these three cups in this one quart, I'm going to decompose my three quarts into two quarts. And do you remember how many cups are in a quart? You can always look back at your chart. There are four cups in a quart. So now I've got two quarts and four cups minus one quart and three cups. Well, quarts minus quarts will give me one quart 
and 4 cups minus 3 cups will give me 1 cup. So now all I have to do is just answer the question. How much more liquid can the pitcher hold? The pitcher can hold 1 quart and 1 cup more. Okay? All right, now we have a chart here. Dorothy follows the recipe in the table to make her grandma's cherry lemonade. How much lemonade does the recipe make? So if we're going to put all of these amounts together, how could we figure out how much liquid the recipe makes? What would we have to do with all of these amounts? Well, we would have to add them, right? So my first strategy here is, look, I've got pints, cups, gallons, and quarts. So I think I'm going to start with the largest items first. So I have one gallon in the water. So I've got one gallon and one quart plus three quarts. So I'm going to add together the water and the cherry juice because these are the two largest items. And that's going to give me one gallon and four quarts. So what do we know about four quarts? That's equal to a gallon. So altogether that equals two gallons. Okay, so I've added the water and the cherry juice. So now what would happen if I added these two gallons plus five pints and two cups. How many pints are in a gallon? That would be eight, right? How many cups are in a pint? Two. So can we change this to a pint equals one pint? And now I can say five pints plus one pint equals six pints. Now how many pints are in a gallon? Eight. So we can't convert that anymore. So now we can just say the recipe makes two gallons and six pints. All right, one more problem. How many more cups of water could Dorothy add to the recipe to make an exact number of gallons of lemonade? All right, so let's think about this for a minute. We want to go up to the next gallon. So what would the next gallon be? The next gallon would be three gallons. And right now I have two gallons and six pints. And I want to know what would it take to get this to three gallons. So how many gallons would I have to, how many pints would I have to add? Let's look at this thinking of the arrow way. What would I have to add to get this to three gallons? Well, how many pints are in a gallon? Eight, right? So how many pints would I have to add to make this eight pints, which would be equal to a gallon? Well, that would be two, right? If I added two pints, I would have two gallons and eight pints, which would be equal to three gallons. So the answer would be, Dorothy could add two pints of water to make three gallons. Okay, so today's lesson was kind of tricky. You really had to think about a lot of things at one time. It's really important that you keep in mind how many gallons you have and pints and quarts and what those conversions are. Anytime you're trying to figure that out, you can always draw that model that I showed you and go back to your model to help you to convert from one area of or one unit of capacity to another.